Bionic Commando is one of the classic 8-bit Capcom games. It was one of the few titles that featured a truly innovative mechanic. One of the things that makes Bionic Commando so unique is that it's a title that was extremely popular in the US, not so much in Europe, and had very little popularity in Japan. Capcom is a Japanese company, so Bionic Commando was one of the titles that they probably least would have realized needed uh, an update or a remake because it just did not have the popularity that it did in the U.S. I've been pretty much trying to push this title through for several years. It just sometimes you have to make the gradual climb and keep, you know, striving more and more forward until you can convince everybody about it. So it has been a long struggle uh, and I hope by the end of it we can create a game that, you know, both the fans appreciate and that the Japanese side who are willing to support it in the end can think, yes, I'm glad we supported that title, and yes, it's a franchise that in fact did need to be remade. Anytime you go into updating an old story into modern day, a lot of things have changed. I think Binet Commando, if you go back and analyze the key parts of its story, the main character was named Rad Spencer. No, we are not going to call our main character Rad. They had a, a character you were there to rescue, Super Joe. And then on top of that, you were fighting an army called the Bads. Obviously, there are some things that you can use, and there are some things that you need to tweak a little bit. That being said, we are extremely big fans of the original. Mainly, it's the gameplay that pulls you in. But the story is important too. So what we tried to do from a story perspective is make sure that the main characters that were all very important, and there are other characters that I'm not going to mention that were in the story, will most likely be appearing in this next gen update of it. But some of the key ones you're going to know right away. The basic plot synopsis, the basic intro uh, of the story is that uh, one day, the, in the federal states of America, the FSA, which is sort of like what an alternative reality of what the USA could later become, one of their major cities, a city named Ascension City, is bombed by a new high-tech prototype weapon known as the Witherer. And the Witherer, what it does is generates a uh, 9.5 magnitude earthquake that just rips through the city, destroys all the buildings, while at the same time incinerating, incinerating all its inhabitants. So basically, in the blink of an eye, everybody in a second city is just gone and destroyed. So this new power that's naming themselves BioRain have come into the city. They have locked down all, all of the area and set up very advanced anti-aircraft uh, perimeter. That it's basically keeping the, the FSA government from sending in any sort of planes to drop bombs or anything and stop them that way. So all high-powered, high-tech means of stopping them are out. They have one last option, and that option is Nathan Spencer, who has been put in jail for assassinations of anti-bionic leaders in the past. So pulling him out of jail is a big gamble, but they decide to pull him out of jail because he's the only one that on foot can get into the city and has with his bionic arm enough power to perhaps stop this bionic army that he's going to have to face. He is, however, so dangerous that when they ship him into the city, they are sure to separate him from his arm because had they just put his arm on uh, when he was at the government, he probably would have gone crazy and destroyed everybody. So they ship them in separately. And that's how the game begins, with him first trying to get intel on what exactly the BioRain group is trying to do in the city and why they have attacked it in the first place. The actual evolution of the character it was a very long process. I'm sure people are going to say that in any title that they do, because the character is kind of the face of the game. For us, I think we had to produce two faces of the game. We needed a cool main character and we needed a cool bionic arm. And so we went through multiple concepts. We did have extremely skinny characters. We had big Gears of War-esque large, you know, characters. Did we want this character to be acrobatic? Did we want him to be more powerful? Uh, we went through a different range of colors. Did we want the arm to be, you know, bright red, orange, blue, yellow, etc. And we ended up coming out with a more uh, blue glowing, sort of modernish, sleek arm design. Because that's what they wanted in the focus test. Um, and 
We went with that probably for about three months. And then the director, Ulf Anderson, goes, hmm, I'm not very happy with the arm. So I said, all right, so long as you can do it within this very tight schedule, I will let you have another crack at it. And so he came back and he showed it to us. He showed us this uh, MPEG of the hand, it, it, and it's basically a claw. It's got four different, uh, what do you call them, tentacle-like appendages uh, to, to attach to things, and it looks very powerful. And then it transforms into a hand, and it's a very fluid hand with different joints and stuff. And when I saw that, I was like, that's cool. There are certain things along the development process where you're going to look at it and say, that's cool, let's go with that. And there are other times you're going to look at it and go, oh, you really chose that color? That was one of the points where we said, that's cool. And when I showed it around enough people, they all were like, okay, that's cool. So we decided to go with that new arm. And I'm glad that we did. It's always tough when it comes down to a major aspect or a major piece of art for the title to know whether to go with it or to cut it loose. So basically, we were very happy with how the arm turned out. Um, as far as how much, I don't want to say fanfare, but as far as how truthful we've main, I'm sorry, how truthful we have maintained the original story into this next gen version, um, we definitely have kept some of the key characters, of which, once again, there weren't too terribly many. We have tried to keep the visual style. We have, even though we have renamed the Bads to the Imperials, they are still, in essence, the same army that they were. We have tried to make sure that the swing aspect, of course, feels very similar. And, of course, there is certain equipment that the main character will later be privy to, will later have, that I think fans, when they see it, will go, oh, that's cool. Um, I, can't, I can say that you're probably looking at the biggest Binet Commando fan probably in the world and so I just wanted to make sure that we had enough so that people are going to walk away and say yes they were very faithful to the Bionic Commando series because a lot of times when you do remakes people lose touch of what's important and I think it's you can't make it like it was because it was an 8-bit title and there has been too many years without a new Bionic Commando to flesh out the story but I think you can't ever forget the fans because they're the ones that truly are going to support this title.